This Asian American is experiencing Asia withdrawals after a trip to the motherland and coming back to the Midwest. David, what can they do about it? You know, I was born and raised in the Midwest. Then I went to Asia. Now I came back and feel depressed. Let's take a look wow. at the post. Just came back from Asia. Feel sad to be back in the Midwest. Hi, I'm a Chinese American that just came back from a vacation visiting some relatives. Asia was awesome because I never felt othered. It was nice having people look like me and I feel like I fit in with the culture better. I just came back from Malaysia. For example, I feel like the Americas can be pretty fluffy nice and it feels so fake. But people in Malaysia were so nice but direct without the fluff. I miss it. Does anybody else ever feel the same? Whoa. All right. I feel like a lot of people feel this way, especially if you're Americanized and you come from a place that's maybe not so Asian and then you go to Asia and you have such a good time and you have all these feelings and you're on this Asia high and then you start feeling Asian withdrawals. I do want to note this OP is a woman, so it's not a guy. So make it. I don't know if it, I think men and women both feel these type of things um, because I felt these things and I have a bunch of friends who have also felt this coming back from Asia. So we want to talk about the reasons why you might feel depressed coming back from Asia and the things you can do about it, right? Right. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com. I mean, immediately, let's just say this. There is a pretty gap, big gap between Malaysia and the Midwest. Right. They both begin with an M. But we are talking about something with gigantic standard deviations where I'm saying that like when I remember when I we were in Hong Kong, Andrew, you met a lot of Canadians moved there from Calgary. But they said if you were from Toronto or Vancouver, you tended to stay in Vancouver and Toronto because those cities were already sufficient, sufficiently Asian enough. Mm. So it really has to do with like the gap between how you're raised, how you're treated, where you're raised, how much you fit in where you're raised and then where you went. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're not the most popular person in the Midwest. So obviously when they go to Malaysia, they just feel, they just want that comfortable feeling of feeling accepted. Guys, let's just paint a picture of what this person is missing, whether they're a guy or girl or whatever. Just think about it. Look, let's say they go to Kuala Lumpur or Penang. You know, these are the main cities in Malaysia that you'd visit. You got big nightclubs full of Asian people. You got these big Chinatowns. They actually have Chinatowns still in Kuala Lumpur, but it's gigantic. And then you have all these amazing, hawker stalls, all this great food, all these Asian people who probably uh, kind of understand where you're coming from. Yeah, they're probably if, also Chinese Malaysian, right? Yeah. yeah, and even if you are Americanized, like sometimes going to Asia and meeting the international kids or the kids there who speak English, they still to be honest, give you a slight American bump for just being Asian American. Are you where, talking about the people who want you to meet their ama? Even that, or just regular, you know, Malaysians who are just learning English or whatever. And then also think about coming back to the Midwest. Here's the situation in the Midwest. I might be picking, cherry picking pictures, but here, you got this restaurant representing Chinese food. You mean Zhejiang you, Garden? <laughs> you got Cleveland's Asia Town, which is like, looks like a barren desert. Woo! I'm, I'm sure it's has, had had better, better days. Detroit's Chinatown is like non-existent. They're trying to build a new one because the other old one like, got burned down or something. Well, it looks honestly like a, a scene out of Warrior. Yeah, so honestly, if you are looking for a very Asian experience in the Midwest, minus maybe parts of Chicago, I think Chicago has enough people, you can find it. No, but, the, the, the Chicago Chinatown is decent. Right, but, but ultimately... It's the West Coast. That's the only place in America you're really, especially as a Malaysian Chinese, is going. you're going to feel like you can meet other Malaysian Chinese there. Honestly, right. probably it, L.A. Uh, realistically, in terms of mimicking the climate of L, uh, Malaysia, you're going to be looking at 626, even over NorCal. Right, right, right. So I guess like... Let's talk about why so many Asian Americans are depressed after taking a trip to Asia. And I think this applies to almost any Asian American, no matter your motherland. Right, right, right. For different reasons, right? Point number one, you saw a fully fledged Asian society where Asians got to be the nerds to the jocks, to the gangsters, to the CEOs, to the homeless beggars. And in America, quite often, it's very difficult to find that, especially in the Midwest, Right? right? Asians are more pigeonholed into two things. Usually what? Asian model minority, maybe what? Some sort of like clannish, Asian gangsta enclave lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, it probably just feels like a fully fledged world of people who look like yourself. Yeah, I think it's key that the OP said that when I was in Asia, I never felt othered. I didn't feel othered. Yeah, of course you wouldn't because when you walk in, when you're walking the streets, you look like any other Malaysian person. Like they're not going to 
look at you differently. Maybe they looked at you as a, a fully fledged regular person. Yeah, right, right. If anything, they're going to look at you with admiration if they find out you're wearing like American brands or you possess some sort of American fluency that they might put on a pedestal. Point number two, the Midwest has a big lack of Asian culture, obviously compared to areas such as SoCal, NorCal, or Hawaii. Uh, you know, Hawaii being more Hawaiian culture. Uh, right. NYC has a lot of Asians too, but it's more like uh, Asians trying to make it in the big city, right, sort right, of contextualizing right. themselves within that fishbowl. But like, what, what, do you think it's just the fact that where she comes from, like you said, it's like Sichuan Garden or Zhejuan Garden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the Midwest and obviously towns that have like so few Asians, and then you take a trip to Asia, you're probably the most jarred. Like it's the most jarring and it's the most, you probably miss it the most and maybe when she was typing this she was literally on that on that asia high you know just because right. you're just you're just you're still all those memories are so clear you're still smelling the hawker stalls right 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 you're like oh my gosh i was at zejuan garden now i'm at the hawker stall uh, i'll say this uh we have a lot of korean friends from seattle and they told me that C uh, seattle koreans are much more likely to move to seoul than la korean because la koreans already have a bit of seoul where they grew up in their backyard. Uh, so it, it, it always, you have to contextualize everything with how you grew up to your point, how jarring it is. Um, point number three, Andrew, you might think that something is wrong with you because you don't fit in in the Midwest in your hometown, but your existence is just a bad fit for the environment. So you're basically just looking for fish bowls where your type of fish that you are fits in better yeah i mean let's be honest like if you're a man or woman in the midwest and you're asian like if you're tall and good looking and from one of those good midwestern asian families you mean you assimilated yeah and you're educated and, and you're corn fed no but even if you're like just just cool like obviously that's going to raise your status in the midwest maybe you find a little space where you find your group of friends in the midwest and stuff but yeah i could see like if if you just if if you just want to feel like a regular person and you just want to you take so much comfort in talking to regular people on the streets, like how you talk to your aunt and parents, because let's say this is a Malaysian family and she want, and she, you can meet all these aunties and uncles at the hawker stall and at all the stores. They're asking you if you have bakute. And yeah, it is true that in Malaysia and Singapore, it is very like auntie and uncle-y, right? It's very like- Even more, even more than like China. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you can call each other auntie and uncle and there's still, they want you to feel some type of familiarity with each other. And that- is something that I could really see she misses because she probably only feels that around her immediate family right now in the Midwest. Right, right, right. Uh, point number four, you don't really see the upside ceiling being available in the Midwest where you just feel like your, your development is capped out. Mm. Point, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, ultimately, if you don't feel like, if you're very ambitious and you don't feel like you can reach the... Uh, I don't want to say upper crust, but like even the upper middle class networks of the so Midwest. Perhaps more socially, even yeah. than career wise. No, I'm, yeah, either or. Like, if you don't feel like you can ad adapt to them, then it's a lot less appealing. Like, essentially, what I'm saying is, for example, even if you're a foreigner, but you somehow relate to the upper crust of society that's going to make you feel a lot more comfortable because you're like, well, at least I'll have a nice career and I can network with the top 5% of well, people. Well, that's why foreigners always love like colonial Asia, like Hong Kong or Shanghai for a while, right? Because even though they couldn't relate to the masses of the general population, they could relate to some small elite class. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can't relate to the football America, but you can relate to the golf America. And that is still going to provide a lot for your life. Right. Um, Here's another point, though. You may not just love being around Asians, but you love being your exact, being around your exact type of Asian and having family that loves you. Yeah. So, so you you can't you don't want to jump the gun and think it's just the Asian phenotype when it's actually like that combined with a bunch of other things. Sure. I mean, maybe if she's Malaysian, I don't know how she feels if she's in Japan or Beijing. You know what I mean? Like. Maybe Tokyo, Beijing, it gives her a different vibe than obviously when she's in her motherland country of Malaysia. That or, you know, yeah, maybe Southeast Asia is a little bit more friendly with it in general. A little yeah. bit more jovial, a little bit more easy sure, going. Sure, 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 yeah. Uh, point number six, Andrew, it could theoretically just be a you issue that travels with you. I mean, based off where what she said, I don't know if this fully is the case, but for some people changing the fishbowl is not going to change the fish. Yeah, because... But sometimes changing the fishbowl does matter a lot. Listen, I will say this. If you're a very shy person, 
no matter where you live, you're not going to have like the biggest social circle, obviously, even just because you move to Asia and you're Asian, but you're a shy Asian, it doesn't mean all of a sudden this brand new life opens up for you. Anywhere you go, you're going to have to try hard. It's just about you're looking for the best return on investment. You're the best exchange. Yeah, rate. yeah, yeah, yeah. More units of ROI return given your effort investment, but the effort investment will still need to be there in a pretty yeah. large sum. All right, David. So now that I feel like we've kind of established that we, I don't know this person personally, but we kind of understand where she's coming from. Like these are common feelings that a lot of Asian Americans have. So we kind of broke it down why you're feeling this way. And it seems like moving for her out of the Midwest would be one of the solutions if that's on the table for her, right? Right. I believe she's from St. Louis. Right. In, in the post. St. Okay. Louis, no Asians. Yeah. Outside, not, of the, outside of the buffet. Yeah. So, and, and not like considered a super nice city either. Right. I mean, it has nice right, parts, right, but right. People yeah. probably think you're like cooking bourbon chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess, how do people get over the fear of moving because a lot of Asian Americans are like, I want to move or I have the desire to right. move elsewhere, but like, how do I do it? Or like, it's scary. I grew up in the Midwest. Well, maybe the West Coast or East Coast Asians won't like me, whatever, what? Yeah, point number one, I think you've got to focus less on the cost and the fear and you got to think about the enormous upside. It's not that you don't think about the cost and the fear because you're probably like a Midwest person so you, you just know what you know a little bit more parochial lifestyle, but like, you got to think about it in the sense of like, man, if I go to this new place and I put in work, I'm going to get so much more in return, more friends, more random pings. Those random pings, if I have value to offer, is going to lead me to more connections of other valuable people, to whether monetarily or just a valuable social life. Mm. You know what I mean? So I guess what I'm saying is you got to think about the upside and not just focus on your fear of right. the unknown or uncomfortable. I mean, what if your parents thought about the fear of immigrating to America all the time? Would they have even came here? What if we get shot back in Asia? There's no guns. Yeah. No, I mean, if every Asian parent did not move to America, there would be no Asian Americans. Uh, point number two, um, you could find Midwest transplants like yourself on the West Coast or Midwest to East Coast transplants or even Midwest to Texas transplants yeah it, it, there's so much movement nowadays it's not like you can't join an online group find all the midwesterners i don't even know what they eat in the midwest food wise fully but like you could just go eat that midwestern food together in la or something yeah you probably got a friend i don't know if you went to college that probably is from a different place you can always visit them kind of see what they're up to uh lots of stuff to do guys there's transplants every people move all the time what? if you think in 2024 that you can't move from where you're from in America, even if you grew up in New York City or LA, one of the appealing places, right? And you don't think you can move, well, that you're just holding yourself back then. No one's telling you you can't move. Right, your parents moved from Malaysia yeah. to St. Louis. What a shock it was for them. Point number three, yeah, obviously nowadays there's furnished sublets, short-term leases, dating apps, friend-finding apps, every single type of Facebook group imaginable. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you just got to use the internet to like test it out short-term stays, right? Yeah. This last point I want to ask, and this is just something that you have to ask yourself if you have the desire to move and you're having trouble. It's like, what do you owe people to where you're from? I mean, like, what is anchoring you down? Now, if you are responsible for taking care of your family or you're responsible for taking care of all your younger brothers and sisters or you have a family business that you're the heir to and that you're supposed to take over, I get it. Those are pressures that, you know, I can't imagine that maybe you will have to stay in town, right? Like there are just some things that to fulfill your duty as a, as a son or daughter, maybe you have to do. But that's our destiny. We have to run the one Malaysian restaurant and say, yeah, Malaysia. maybe, maybe that's your destiny. I don't want to say it's easy for everybody, but if you don't have those strings tying you down and you're not responsible for your parents and your family, it's like, then you have the option to move and just, you just have to tell yourself like, Hey, people move all the time. Even if it's for like four or five years, right. you can come back. Right. And then by that time, your city might be a little bit different and you have a different perspective and you feel better about life. Yeah. I see this a lot. I see this a lot. Uh, maybe it's because the Reddit crowd is particularly uh, prone to like complaining about things, but not taking action, but you can't know that you're going to thrive and have a better life in another environment and not immediately go to that other environment. Mm -hmm. Like that is like just a real, you're basically being toxic to yourself at that point. Right. Because right. 
you're acting like a fish that needs an owner to scoop the fish out of the net and move it to a other fishbowl. But here's the crazy thing about life, Andrew. The fishbowl analogy works because we're all born into these fishbowls, but we can like teleport to other fishbowls. So you could tele keep teleporting to different fishbowls in life until you find one where the pros heavily outweigh the cons for yourself. Teleport to other fish bowls. Teleporting Hell fish bowls. Yeah. David, we teleported to a different fish bowl. I mean, we moved from the Seattle area down to LA. And that wasn't, and I just always knew we were gonna do that, but it wasn't because like Seattle doesn't have Asians or we don't have friends in Seattle. It's just that, you know, the the career wise and the industry was is more in LA. Yeah, well, yeah, Seattle Asians Seattle. are more just uh, trying to do tech. Yeah. Or, or something else. Or just live their life. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, I guess um, let us know in the comments down below if you've ever felt this. I know that a lot of Asian Americans watch our videos. And, like, you know, if you've ever taken trips back to Asia and you felt and you came back on that high for, like, you know, those next two, three weeks, mm. you're thinking about the trip and you're like, ah, and you're still chatting with some of the people that back home or some of the relatives and, like, sending pictures back and not, not all the pictures got sent yet, so you're still thinking about it. But, but like, what do you do when you're back home? Right, right. Like, how do you deal with this? You know what I mean? Well, is it the equivalent of being from a really, let's just say, for example, you, you live in a house with a bunch of unhealthy people, chips, candies, a lot of processed stuff around. And then you go on a health retreat where you guys are working out every day, eating single ingredient, whole organic foods. And then you come back and you're like, this Cheeto environment doesn't make me happy anymore. Don't you owe it to yourself to try to make something happen? I mean, li like you said, Andrew, is life all about just small decisions that are difficult to make? Yeah. Yeah, man. It's just about, uh, and I feel like sometimes as Asian Americans, you are called to make harder decisions more often because maybe you don't, you aren't born with this mm. comfortability. You know, I don't want to call it privilege necessarily, but just being born with this comfortability in your community and stuff like that. You're not, maybe you're not the, yeah, like for whatever reason, you're just not living the life that you feel like you should be or that you could be somewhere else. So, you know, right, yeah, right, everybody right. has to make hard decisions. Yeah, in life, we're not going to be born into a situation where the probability that we fit in with the local townies that stay at the local bar pub for like 20, 30, 40 years is that high. I do see a few Asians like kind of slip into that. Mm -hmm. But more than likely, you don't fit in with that crowd. They, yeah. They're like stayed in the same hometown is going to die there for the rest of their life. So, you guys, listen, guys. This is the situation. You're called on to do certain things in your life. Improve your life. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you guys going through something similar? Do you have a cousin that's in a similar mentally, psychologically stuck place, but they know they should get out of that fishbowl? Let us know what you think. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.